Today, we're talking about wound odor, specifically what it's telling you, what it's not, and why it's one of the most misunderstood signs in wound care. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to use odor as a clinical clue, not a reason to panic. We've all been there. The dressing comes off and there it is. The smell, strong, sharp, maybe sweet, maybe foul. And everyone in the room freezes for a second, wondering, is that normal or is this infection? We assume odor equals danger, but what if that smell isn't a red flag yet? What if it's actually an early warning, your first clue before other signs even show up? For those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Voltaire, a wound care physician. Over the years, I've learned that wound odor isn't something you tolerate or ignore or treat blindly. It's something you listen to. I once caught a pseudomonas infection, not because of labs, because the wound smelled like overripe grapes. That moment changed how I see every dressing change now. If you're just starting a wound care, or if you've been in it for a while and still feel that moment of hesitation, when a wound smells strong, this is for you. This isn't about high-tech tools or fancy tests. This is about something you already use every day your senses. You're closer to the answer than you think. Here's what we'll cover today. Why wounds smell at all and what creates that odor? What pseudomonas really smells like and how to spot it? Three categories of odor and what they usually mean. The three question filter to help you decide what to do next. And we'll close with a real story where a nurse's nose saved a patient from a serious systemic infection. Wounds can smell. It's biology. Tissue breaks down, bacteria move in, moisture mixes with oxygen, and together they they create volatile organic compounds, molecules that have an odor. But that doesn't automatically mean the wound is infected. Therefore, we have to get comfortable asking, what kind of wound is this? And what else is going on? It's not the smell that matters, it's the pattern. Let's talk about Pseudomonas. This bacteria gives off a sweet, almost synthetic odor. People describe it as grape soda or corn chips or even fresh nail polish remover. We had a patient once, small wound, minimal drainage, no redness, but the odor was different. I walked into the room and paused. Rape, almost candy-like. I didn't ignore it. We swabbed and Pseudomonas was confirmed. We adjusted the dressing, added a topical antimicrobial, and caught it before systemic symptoms ever developed. That one moment taught me, trust your nose. It's not guessing, it's gathering data. Let's break odor down into three simple categories. You have moisture odor, that wet basement smell. This happens when there's too much drainage, the dressing is soaked, the edges are macerated. So think musty, damp, like a basement in the summer. So the solution would be manage moisture better, consider more absorbent dressings and better change frequency. Then you have your product odor. So silver dressings, iodine, honey, these can all leave a strong scent, but they don't mean the wound is infected. You need to be able to separate dressing odor from wound odor. Then you have your bacterial odor. This is your flag. Foul or sweet, like in Pseudomonas, should lead to closer inspection. But remember, don't treat the smell, treat the wound. So how do you assess odor without overreacting? This is where most people get stuck. They smell something and immediately think, start antibiotics or change everything. But instead, pause. Ask yourself three things. Does the odor persist after irrigating the wound? If not, it may have been trapped in the dressing. Has the odor changed recently? Sudden changes matter more than consistent smell. Are there other signs of infection? pain, redness, drainage, fever. If it's odor and one or more of those, escalate treatment. If it's odor alone, reassess, irrigate, monitor, and document. Let me tell you about a nurse I worked with. One morning she said, after seeing a patient, this wound smells different. I can't explain it. It's not stronger, just different. The wound looked fine, no visual changes, but we paid attention. Because the patient had elevated heart rate and elevated temperature, signs of an infection, we also did labs, which showed elevated white blood cells and the culture came back with anaerobes and pseudomonas. So we started targeted antibiotics within 24 hours. That patient never became septic. Her nose made the difference. Because she trusted her senses, she asked the right questions at the right time. Here's what I want you to take away. Odor is not embarrassing. It's not gross. It's not a failure. It's a signal. Sometimes it means more moisture control. Sometimes it means infection is brewing. Sometimes it's just telling you, pay attention, I'm changing. If you start listening, really listening, you'll catch problems 
symptoms before they show up in vitals, labs, or wound progression. Odor is a language you can learn. You already have the tools, your nose, your attention, your instinct. You don't need to fear wound odor. You need to read it, just like color, just like depth, just like temperature. Odor belongs in your wound assessment, not your worries. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you look at wound odor differently, check out my next video on why catching peripheral arterial disease early makes all the difference, especially in wounds that refuse to heal. Stay informed and heal well.